Fork is a Whitless Bay restaurant that shares bricks and mortar with another eatery. In daytime, the dory-colored building overlooking the bay operates as a cafe called Irish Loop Coffee House. Evenings from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., the space is occupied by Fork, a fine dining restaurant where Chef Kyle Puttister and crew hold sway. Surrounded by decor of chrome kitchen table sets and a sideboard teapot collection, everything brightly colored, including the walls, I got a strong smell of homespun B&B, minus the first B, one with a great water view. Anticipation was in the air too. Ours and every other table was anxious to see what Fork could do. How fine would this fine dining experience be? The provenance of a chef's ingredients is often revelatory in such matters. I asked Kyle Puttister about that, and his answer was reassuring. Uh, we try to utilize as much local uh, product as we can. Uh, we're working closely with a supplier in Mobile, uh, Steve and Lisa McBride. Uh, they supply us with a lot of vegetables and different things. And other than that, it's just whatever we can get from a day-to-day, week-to-week basis from other farms in town and other suppliers. Uh, menu changes fairly, fairly often, almost weekly, sometimes every three days. Uh, other than that, it's whatever we want to cook. We try to do, just try to keep it simple, four or five ingredients per plate, really simple flavors, fresh, local. We shared a plate of excellent PEI Raspberry Point oysters, tasting of ozone and faintly of brine. I ignored the mignonette and horseradish sauces, opting to extract full enjoyment from the sweet finish of the natural oyster. A ceviche made with the Irish Loop's own Placentia Bay scallops looked quite jolly and was fun to eat. After all, how many scallop dishes include popcorn? The scallops were pretty much cooked by the coconut-flavored marinade, but still tender. The popcorn sprinkled around the plate was tandoori-scented. It made a nice flavor and texture contrast. Orville Rettenbacher must have been smiling. Served with a delicious, spicy, slightly pecan rice mixture, Fork's Korean barbecue pork ribs were a treat. Kochujang is a type of Korean red pepper paste. It may have been what gave the ribs their red tinge. I also tasted soy, garlic, and sugar. More important, the rich grilled meat offered little resistance. It left the bone as easily as the mozzarella slides off a margarita pizza. Skillfully made ricotta stuffed ravioli came with sliced prosciutto and a dressing of green peas, cherry tomatoes, and dandelion pesto. What can I say? It was marvelous. A comforting, no discord dish, demonstrating beautiful harmony of flavors. I felt like we should sing the ode to Newfoundland before tasting Fork's plate of sautéed cod. It featured fogo cod, potato, salt meat, turnip greens, and mustard pickles, manna for the born and bred. As integral to the uniqueness of this place as a branch or portograve dialect. There are no adjectives to describe how good the cod tasted. From first to last flaky bite, it was beyond extraordinary. The famous solo ballet, The Dying Swan, was created for Russian prima ballerina Anna Pavlova. Pavlova's name is now more famous for the dessert named after her. A classic Pavlova is a cake made from meringue topped with fresh cream and fruit. Fork's version featured individual meringue cookies set on a circular pipe of lemon curd, with each cookie carefully separated by a rosette of whipped cream. Each rosette was topped with halved blackberries, tiny yellow flowers, and bits of granola. The visual effect of this bijou wreath was of a delicate ephemeral work of art. I'm sure Pavlova would have loved it for its appearance and its taste. 
The Fork Restaurant of Whitless Bay, Newfoundland receives an excellent rating of three stars out of four. Dinner for two, without alcohol, but with tip and tax costs approximately $150. For reservations, call 709-743-3490.